January 4th, 2006. USC leads Texas by five points in the Rose Bowl. The Trojans are 26 seconds away from winning back-to-back -back BCS National Championships. All they have to do is stop the Longhorns and Vince Young on fourth down. Granted, it isn't that simple, but we're here in the closing seconds about to witness the climax of arguably the greatest college football game ever played. No matter what happens next, so much of what got us to this point is about to be immediately overshadowed. To remember how we got here, let's rewind. This game has lived up to the hype, but how did we get to these two teams playing for it all in Pasadena? For USC, they came into 2005 riding a 22-game win streak. 2004's Heisman Trophy winner Matt Leinart had returned for another season instead of being a potential top five pick in the NFL draft. With head coach Pete Carroll calling the defense and first-year offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin unleashing the thunder and lightning Reggie bush lindale white combo, the Trojans didn't miss a beat. Aside from some theatrics needed to get past Notre Dame, USC's quest for back-to-back -back outright titles saw them stretch their win streak to 34, becoming part of the conversation for greatest college football team of all time. As for Texas, they were riding a 19-game win streak of their own after finishing the previous season with just one loss. 2004 was capped off by a victory over Michigan, also at the Rose Bowl, where Vince Young delivered an MVP performance, then put college football on notice after the game. Yes, sir, we'll be back! The Longhorns dodged a close call during a trip to Columbus, thanks to Cedric Griffin and Young's late-game heroics. But after that, Texas cruised. They didn't just win out. They demolished their remaining schedule, winning by an average of 37 and a half points which included a 70-3 romp over Colorado to secure Mac Brown's first ever conference championship. By December, no one debated which two teams deserved to play for the national title. Not only had they combined for 53 straight wins, but they were also the only undefeated teams in the nation. This was a far cry from the two previous years, which gave us co-national champions in 2003, and then in 2004, USC rolled through Oklahoma in the national championship, leaving us with eight months to wonder which of the three other undefeated schools should have been there instead of the Sooners. So we've got a championship between the only teams ranked one and two all season. But how we got to the other numbers on the scoreboard isn't as straightforward. Back in the second quarter, three momentum-changing yet questionable plays stole the show. The first came with USC up 7-0 and driving. Reggie Bush looked to do what he'd done all season, taking a screen pass 35 yards and into the red zone. As he was getting tackled, he tried to lateral the ball to teammate Brad Walker. Walker, and most everyone else, did not expect this. Texas jumped on the fumble, and six plays later hit a 46-yard field goal to get on the board. Replays showed there was at least a chance of this being a forward pass instead of a lateral, which would mean a penalty on USC and they'd retain possession. But there was no review. Jumping ahead to their next drive, and once again USC was moving the ball. Longhorn safety Michael Griffin flew in to prevent a liner to Steve Smith touchdown. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass, but thanks to the lobbying of some Texas defenders, the officials reviewed and changed that call, making it Texas ball at the 20. Six plays later, the Longhorns found themselves with a first down at the USC 22. Now, this is worth a trigger warning for USC fans. But as we'd find out later in the game, there was more to this next play than we realized at the time. Vince Young kept it on the option, and as he got wrapped up near the 10, lateraled the ball to Selvin Young, who zagged his way into the end zone. Pitched it out, he pitched it out. Replays clearly showed Vince's knee hit the turf before the ball left his hand, which should have killed the play there, giving the USC defense another chance to make a stop. However, just like the Reggie Bush lateral, this play wasn't given an official review. The touchdown counted, and Texas was up 9-7 while everyone watching was shown replays of his knee hitting the ground. He was on the ground before he pitched the ball. The thing is, officials were in fact trying to review the play. Unfortunately for USC, human error got in the way. Despite a crew of specialists brought in to oversee the use of replay for the first time ever in a national championship, not all of the correct camera sources had been fed into the system. The replay booth was left rewinding via TiVo while watching a second monitor of the live broadcast, hoping they'd show a new angle. As officials scrambled for proof, Texas snapped the ball for the extra point. 
The booth finally saw a camera angle that clearly showed Young's knee was down before he pitched the ball, but it was too late. This also could have been why Bush's lateral didn't get reviewed as a potential forward pass. Either way, Texas caught some breaks, but they're still down five, facing a fourth down. All eyes are on Vince Young, who can thank his kicker for being in this situation, but not in a good way. Entering the game, analysts agreed that Texas had the edge when it came to special teams. Kicker David Pino didn't get that memo though. And after hitting all 10 extra points in their previous game, he missed the attempt following Texas's first touchdown. You could argue he was rushing to beat a review that wouldn't come, but he also opened the fourth quarter by missing a 31-yard field goal. Had he hit those makeable kicks, Texas would be down just one in these closing seconds. And rather than warming up without purpose on the sideline, Pino would actually be on the field. Instead, up five points, USC's defense has the chance to stop Texas on fourth down and go home victorious. With the way this game has gone, it's all too perfect that it comes down to this. Because tonight already has a long history of fourth down attempts. Going back to Texas's very first drive, running back Selvin Young was stopped deep in the backfield by a juiced up USC defense on fourth and one. On the ensuing possession, the Trojans drove down inside the Texas 20. Facing a fourth and one of their own, Pete Carroll chose not to attempt a 34-yard field goal. And as Liner took the snap left of center, his foot slipped and Texas defenders piled up to stop him short. For whatever reason, Bush was motioned out wide, giving Liner no support in the backfield to give him a potential boost. Hey, you gotta have Bush in there for the push, don't you? Yep. It wasn't all bad, though. Lindale White's third touchdown of the night came on a fourth and one, so the next time they looked to convert, it was clear who was getting the ball. 2.13 left in the game, USC faced a fourth and two from the Texas 45, with Lindale White waiting in the backfield. White was the 235 pound thunder to Reggie Bush's lightning. Ironically, this thunder averaged 6.7 yards per carry on the season, and tonight already had 123 yards on 19 carries. Originally from Colorado, White committed to USC over Texas, claimed the Trojan career rushing record earlier this season, and most importantly, became friends with Snoop Dogg during his USC tenure. He was the only player on either side to convert a fourth down attempt tonight, and found himself just two yards away from getting his team into victory formation. He was also the reason USC was facing a fourth and two instead of a fourth and inches. White got the ball on third down, but Texas jarred it loose before the line to gain. USC was able to fall on top of it, but lost a yard in the process, putting them in a less ideal situation. White took the fourth down handoff left side into a mass of bodies, gaining over a yard, but failed to get the full two. Texas ball, 2.09 remaining. And nine plays later, we're here. With so many possibilities of what's to come, there is one certainty. Vince Young will touch the ball. And so far, when that's happened, he's been pretty good. He's already completed 75% of his passes for 267 yards, to go along with 192 yards rushing on 18 attempts. But this isn't just a one-game thing. In 2005, he became the first college QB to pass for 3,000 yards and rush for 1,000 in one season. This was his team on and off the field. And the smartest move that Mac Brown had made was to simply let Vince be Vince. Brown, who many believe did his best coaching in February, had removed the reins and his quarterback rewarded him with not only his first conference title, but also a chance in the national championship. That year, sandwiched between Leinart and Bush, Young fell just short of winning the Heisman. This left the kid from Houston and his coach looking to prove the doubters wrong. And here's their chance. It's a moment built on massive winning streaks for both teams, countless plays that easily could have gone the other way, and collegiate stars looking to leave their final marks on the sport. USC has the chance to close their argument as the greatest college football team ever, while Texas aims for their first national title since 1970. So now, on fourth down with 26 seconds left, it's time. Welcome to a moment in history. He's going for the corner, he's got it! Vince Young scores! 
Vinchung also rushed for a two-point conversion, so Texas won 41-38. As for USC, they earned the right to vacate 14 wins, which is a pretty shitty consolation prize.